Hi guys. So welcome back to the channel. <laughs> um, it's another reading vlog. And once again, I'm starting out this week in front of my son's school. I feel like I'm always starting these out in front of my son's school. Um, but And I've already started the book that I'm reading this week. So one of the books I'm reading this week. And it looks like, once again, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick a book off of my own shelf to read. Because <sighs> there's... The book I'm currently reading isn't due, but there's two books after this that's due within like 10 days. So I want to, I don't know why I feel the need to prioritize them, but we'll see. I'm going to read at least one of the ones that's due in 10 days, and then maybe I can read, pick a book off my shelf to read. So there's one I really want to read. So if I can get through this book that I'm currently reading, and then the next one that's I'll do at the library in 10 days, if I can get through that one also then I'm gonna treat myself and read the book that I want to read for myself <laughs> so, so that's what I keep telling myself but anyways the book that I started out reading this week is what we find by Robin Carr now this is um I, I picked this up it is a romance it says it's a romance on the side anyways but, um, I picked this book up because I started watching Solo, and I think I've talked about this when I'm in a previous video. I don't know if I've posted that video yet, actually. <laughs> I don't think I have. So, it'll probably be in the next video you see, because it's my February TBR, I think, where I put this on for my February TBR. So, um, I actually put this on, picked this up because I'm watching Sullivan's Crossing on the CW, and, um, it was so good. I really enjoy. I end up binge watching the whole season within a few days, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, it ends kind of on a cliffhanger, <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Well, anyways, I wanted to read the books before starting the season, and then I was like, well, I'll just watch one episode and see how I like it, and then I'll pick up the book from the library if I really like it. And that just ended up with me watching the entire season and then coming to read the books because the season was so good. <laughs> that I wanted to know what was going to happen. So I have the first and the second book in the series. The Sullivan's Crossing series. So I'll go ahead and read you a little synopsis on it. So you can see like kind of what it's about. So it says between urban, the urban bustle of Denver. And the high stress environment, environment of a career in neurosurgery. Maggie Sullivan has hit a wall. When an emergency high risk procedure results in the death of a teenager. Maggie finds herself in the middle of a lawsuit and experiencing levels of anxiety she's never faced before. She knows she needs to slow down before she burns out completely, and the best place she can think to do that is in Sullivan's Crossing. Named for Maggie's great-grandfather, the land and charming general store at the crossroads of the Colorado and the Continental Divide trails have been passed down through generations and now belong to Maggie's eccentric father, Sully. When she shows up unannounced, he welcomes her with open arms, and she relishes the opportunity to indulge in his simple way of life. But shortly after arriving, Maggie's world is rocked once again. She must take on more responsibility than she planned. So as though she's relieved, a quiet and serious-looking hiker, Cal Jones, is willing to lend a ham. I think there's supposed to be an apostrophe there. Though she's relieved... A quiet and serious-looking hiker, Cal Jones, is willing to lend a hand. Maggie is suspicious of the mysterious man's eagerness to help until she finds out the true reasons for his deliberate isolation. Though Cal and Maggie each struggle with loss and loneliness, the time they spend together gives Maggie hope for something brighter just on the horizon. If only they can learn to find peace and healing and perhaps love with each other. So it sounds really good, right? <laughs> Um, and that is really good. I don't want to say too much about what's going on in this book because there's so much that's going on and will it be spoilery? It would be if you're watching the show. <laughs> because literally what happened, if you've seen the series, what happens at the end of the series with her father, Soli, Soli. It happens at the beginning of this book, which just surprises me. I guess that's just given her the excuse to stick around longer to, so she can take care of her father, let's just say. Let's just say she shows up 
um, pretty much to get away because she was with her fiance Andrew, which is totally different in the in the show too. She was with her fiance Andrew. Um, they've been together for a while. They don't exactly live in the same city, so they just see each other as much as they want. Apparently, Andrew is a divorcee, and he has a kid with his ex-wife, I think it is, and he didn't want any more kids. Well, Miss Maggie ends up pregnant, and he automatically says, well, you need to have an abortion because I don't want another child. And you knew that when we got together. <laughs> and she's like, well, I wasn't pregnant then. And she doesn't want to. She wants this baby. She feels connected to the baby right away. And then not long after that, she has a miscarriage. And she ends up depressed and feeling sad. And pretty much he tells her that she's a burden. As soon as she has, she says, as soon as she has starts having issues that she's a burden and it's too much for him so he ends he breaks up with her pretty much because of that <laughs> and um that's it's after that happens it was like the last straw for her she needed a break so that's when she leaves to go to solomon's crossing and back to her father for um a little bit of a simple life you know and it describes it kind of like a small town but to me, when I'm picturing it, I'm picturing it like a campground. Like, um, have you ever seen those KOA campgrounds? I don't know if they even still have those around. They were around when I was little, when I was younger, the KOA campgrounds. Because they have like a little convenience store and everything on those campgrounds. And then there's, I think there's places where you can actually stay, like little cabins. But then there's actual parking if you have like an RV or um, a mobile home um, or an RV. <laughs> so, um, and it has like places where you can actually pitch a tent and camp. So, that's what I'm kind of picturing here. But I'm picturing it the way they make it sound. I'm picturing it kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Like we're in the woods here. <laughs> that's the way they make it seem like. They're in the middle of the woods. So she runs to her father, and on top of that, she's having, is she, uh, there's some type of embezzlement that's going on with the, the practice that she was in, she was practicing in for her doctor, as a doctor, and it was shutting down, I think, or at least the doctors that she was working with, they can't work there anymore because they're under a lawsuit for embezzlement I want to say and then of course she was and she's an ER doctor and she um and one of the teenagers dies in her ER saying that she makes she missed something because she didn't take enough care to look at him which it's hard she was like the only doctor in the ER it doesn't go into that much detail in the book but in the, in the show, it does. It goes into a little more detail than what you get in this book. But maybe you find out more later on. Because I'm only about almost halfway through the book. So, she has all of that going on. And then he does this to her. He breaks up with her after she ends up having a miscarriage and everything. And she's feeling depressed. And she needs him to be there for her and he's like no you're too much but she, she, she said that she was there for him when he broke his leg and he needed help and he, she's always been there for him but it's like it seems like the one time that she's she wants to be there she needed him to be there for her he wasn't she was too much so that's why she ended up just taking and leaving and she needed some time to herself so not long after she shows up in Sullivan's Crossing her dad with her dad she hasn't really told anybody why she's there or um, what happened um, she hasn't told as far as I know she hasn't told anybody about her miscarriage yet um, she has told somebody about what happened she hasn't told her father but not long after she gets to Sullivan's Crossing she's there for a little bit and then there's a health 
thing that happens with her father. So she ends up staying longer to help nurse him back to health. And, um, so he's in recovery. So she's helping out with the convenience store and stuff that's on the property. Um, and then there's another thing that happens where a girl gets kidnapped and, um, and Maggie stops that. That just happened recently. And then she meets a guy who's been staying at the campgrounds. And he's very mysterious. His name is Cal Jones. And she's <laughs> she's this whole time trying to figure out what his name is. Cal, Calvin, Calhoun. She's like making all these guesses. So every time she talks to him, she's calling him a different name. Trying to figure out which name is right. She's nowhere near we know his name now because he tells her before he before he leaves to go hiking because he's going to be gone for a little bit because there's something that he needs to do so i'm at that part right now where he's already left her they they got together they've been kissing so she's pretty much falling for him and she doesn't want him she didn't want him to leave they did have there was like a very small scene of them having sex in the book um which i skipped over it was just a small scene so i hope there's no more than that because i was okay to just skip over that one scene um and then they just alluded to it if they did it anymore it was it was not talked about really but um yeah i'm really enjoying this book I'm on page 150 right now, which is chapter chapter 8. These It does have longer chapters in this book, but I'm liking, like, here, let me show you. Before the chapters, like, here's chapter 8, but before the chapters, it, like, has a complete break. And there's, like, these little quotes, which I'm enjoying. I can get it open. Hello? There we go. <laughs> so before each chapter, you have like these little quotes like this. And I like that. So this one says, Heaven is under our feet as well as over our heads. So I really enjoy that, that each chapter has some little quote from somebody before it goes into the next chapter. And most of the time, the quote has something to do with what's going on in that chapter. So it's been very interesting. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get to reading more, but, and hopefully I can finish, I would like to finish this book today. I mean, I'm almost halfway through. I feel like if I concentrate it, I would get a lot read now before picking up my son. Um, and then I don't know if I'm going to get a lot read once I get back home. There's things I need to do, but... And I could have read before coming to pick up my son too, but I, I was busy watching A Walk to Remember. I was wanting, to, I, there was just something. I was wanting to see that movie again. This is my favorite movie of all time. Hands down, it'll always probably be my favorite movie. I love A Walk to Remember. But anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to reading. I think it's been a long enough intro for you. Once I finish the book, I'll let you know what my overall thoughts are and my review. And then you'll see what the next book is that I'm planning to read. Because it's probably going to be a good one. It should be one that I can go through pretty fast too. But we'll see. Anyways, let me go get reading. And I'll see you guys when I finish the book. Hi guys. So we meet again the next day. And at my son's school while I'm waiting for him to get out of school. And I have finished the book I was reading the very next day. I stayed up until almost one o'clock in the morning finishing it. Because I was like, well, it was my, <laughs> we were watching Zorro with my husband on Amazon Prime last night. And I'm like reading and watch <laughs> and watching at the same time. Because I was getting so close to the end of my book. I wanted to finish it to see how it ended. And, um. He went to use the bathroom and he came back and he's like, did you realize it's at midnight? I was like, no. Well, I only had one. I was on the last chapter and then I had the prologue. So I was like, well, I'm going to stay here and finish this. I have the rest of this chapter and then I'll be done. And then I'll go, then I'm going to go to bed. And so I finished the chapter and that and then went to the bed 
to the bed at almost 1 a.m. <laughs> and let me tell you, I woke up so tired this morning. I turned my I hit the alarm to snooze, and I I could have went back to sleep <laughs> and slept for much longer. <laughs> not convenient to stay up late reading books especially when you're a mom and a wife and a mom <laughs> but I really did enjoy the book um like I said earlier it does have a couple of um sexual scenes in it so there's a couple spicy scenes in it and then pretty much after the first spicy scene they start having like sexual innuendos i guess between each other when they're talking sometimes so content wise that's why i'm gonna give it a four stars um if it didn't have that in it it would get a higher star for me because i absolutely love the way it ended it in no way ended the way the show did because the way the show ended is the way this book <laughs> is the way the book began like in the like i was telling you about in the beginning her father not long after she gets to solomon's crossing her father has health issues and she ends up staying longer because of that the way the show ends and if you haven't seen the show then i guess this would be spoilers so if you're planning to watch the show solomon's crossing on the cw then i would probably skip this part you heard me skip it now. <laughs> so the way the show ends, it ends with her dad's health issues. And it makes it look like he's having a heart attack, which is what happens in the book. Um, but it happens at the end of the season. So now I'm like very curious as to how the second season is going to play out. And then there's just stuff that's happened between cal and maggie too in this book that hasn't happened yet in the series so i'm wondering if the second season's gonna play out with what they haven't shown in the first season of the book or if they're just going in a different direction with the show than they are with the book but i thoroughly enjoyed the book it was really good writing it kept me engaged and i when i wasn't reading i wanted to read the book so <laughs> i wanted to read more so I, re and I really, really liked Cal and Maggie together. So I'm going to keep reading the series. I have the second book that I can read. But I'm taking a break from it now because there's two library books I need to read. Because they have each have one hold on them. And they're due back in 10 days to my library. So, and today is the 30th, I believe. Yeah, Today is the 30th. So I'm going to try and read... I might see if I can finish this today because I have to go to the library tomorrow um, because the 31st, I have there's a book I have that they put on the whole shelf that if I don't pick it up by the 31st, they're going to put it back. And it's a book I really want to read. So I do have to go to the library tomorrow so I can pick up books but that I have on the whole shelf. I think it's like three or four. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to, and I haven't posted my February TBR yet because it's literally near the end of the month. So probably I'll post that on Thursday. Maybe I'll edit and post it. So I want to add more, I have more books to add to that because of what I'm picking up tomorrow and I've already had another time that I've picked up books. So I'll be adding to my February TBR. I'm already reading some into it, but but um because these both of these books that you're seeing me read right now are part of the february tbr video so you're gonna see some of these uh books well i guess you if i if i edit and post my february tbr on thursday then i guess you will see that before you see this but we'll see i know it's not gonna happen on wednesday because wednesday is too busy it's karate days and that's the day when i have absolutely no no time to do anything i usually just pick up my son we go home he changes karate we go to karate by the time we get home from karate i have to fix dinner for him and uh for us and then by the time i'm done fixing dinner it's almost time for him to go to bed for school the next day so wednesdays are a very busy day for us but anyways you probably don't even care about any of that. I just told you. But anyways. 
This is the next book I'm reading, The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is One Murder, 15 Suspects, Can You Uncover the Truth? Which is, I think, just so interesting. And y'all remember I read The Christmas Appeal at the beginning of the month? Um, yeah, it was at the beginning of the month that I read The Christmas Appeal. So this is now near the end of the month i'm reading the first book in this series because i really did enjoy the christmas appeal and it went by so fast i read it in literal day because this is told in the way of emails and letters text messages i think it's mainly emails though and messages so here it says one murder 15 suspects a wholly original puzzle the Fairway Players, an amateur theater group, are in the middle of rehearsals for their production of Arthur Miller's All My Sons when tragedy strikes. The family of director Martin Hayward and his wife Helen, the young daughter, God, granddaughter, is diagnosed with a rare form of cancer and faces experimental treatment that costs a tremendous sum. So their fellow castmates rally to raise the money to give her a chance at survival. But not everybody is convinced of the experimental treatment's efficiency, nor of the gross, nor of the good intentions of those involved. As tension grows within the community, things come to a shocking head at the explosive dress rehearsal. The next day, a dead body is found, and soon an arrest is made. In the run-up to the trial, two young lawyers sift through the evidence, emails, messages, and letters with a growing suspicion that the killer may be hiding in plain sight. The proof is all there between the lines waiting to be uncovered. So you heard it here, it's told within emails, messages, and letters. So pretty much it's like you're, you're the lawyer. <laughs> it's pretty much like you're the lawyer and you're sifting through these emails, letters, and text messages. The text messages are mainly between the lawyers that are trying to figure out the case. At least that's the way it was in the Christmas appeal. It was like the police or whoever was trying to solve the case was the text messages. But, um, yeah, I've already gotten to the part of, I'm not that far into it. I just started reading it a little bit this morning. Um, but this is a pretty, pretty chunky one. It's a lot of pages. So I don't know how long, but it's told like in like short form. So I feel like it's 400, 416 pages. So that is pretty long, <laughs> but I think I can read it pretty quickly because it's just told in the form of emails and there's no chapters. You just, it looks kind of like this each page where you can see that there's like emails right now I'm in the middle of emails and I already got to the part where they were talking about um where they were talking about they had had any, everybody's like waiting for when the rehearsal time's going to start they found out who was getting whose parts and they were like all emailing have you heard when the rehearsal time's going to start I need to know from my babysitter and all this and that's when they eventually found out that that's what happened that they found out the people who are I guess running the production of the play found out about the granddaughter having cancer and everything and that's why it's been a, such a delay for them to start rehearsals so I've just gotten to that part where they found out about that so so far nobody's showed up dead yet <laughs> apparently somebody's gonna die <laughs> so we'll see um I don't have too many thoughts yet because I just started the book. So I'm just going to keep reading the book and we'll see um, how long it takes me to finish it. In reality, I would love to finish this so I can return it to the library tomorrow. Maybe when I go to pick up my son, um, I can go to the library and drop off books and, and pick up books. And then I can start another book. Um, like I said, was saying earlier in my video, I think if I finish this, like, especially if I can finish this between today and tomorrow before I have to pick up my son, I am going to allow myself to pick a book from the shelf and you'll see which book it is because it's such a small book that it'll probably literally take me probably a day to read that too. <laughs> 
if I can finish this one, then I will allow myself to do that before going into the next book that I have to read that's due in 10 days in my library because I think I can um, finish it before the 10 days, especially if I can finish this within today and tomorrow. I just feel like I can finish it quicker because it's told within, like, letters and stuff. I feel like it just, when books are told that way, it just flies by. Like, I didn't even have that long to read this morning, but I'm already on page 26. And I didn't even have not even an hour to read this morning that I was reading. So, anyways, I'm going to go continue reading because that is my goal to try to finish it before I have to pick up my son tomorrow from school so i'm gonna be doing some reading now i'm gonna be doing some reading when i get back home after picking up my son from school i'll do some reading so yeah sad because I've seen the movie <sighs> but the book is so completely different than the movie he you, you just found out about her cancer and he says on Monday she didn't show up for school and somehow and I somehow knew that she never walked the hallways again I never see her reading the bible off by herself at lunch I never see her brown cardigan moving through the crowd as she made her way to her next class she was finished with school forever she would never have received her diploma beyond <laughs> much sadder than I expected to be <sighs> and he says I began to pray for a miracle from Corinthians that meant a lot to her. 
She told me that if she ever had the chance, it was the passage. She wouldn't ride in her wagon. This is, this is what it said. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It's always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Red and my wedding too. And I got married to my husband. No. And mainly because of the movie. He says Jamie was the truest essence of that very description. <laughs> so we are on chapter 13, and it's right after. He asked her to marry him and says, when I was 17, my life changed forever. As I walked the streets of Buford 40 years later, thinking back on the, that year of my life, I remember everything as clearly as if it were all still unfolding before my very eyes. I remember Jamie saying yes to my breathless question and how we both began to cry together. I remember talking to both Hubert and my parents explaining to them what I needed to do. They thought I was doing it only for Jamie, and that all three of them tried to talk me out of it, especially when they realized that Jamie had said yes. When they didn't understand and I had to make clear to them that was that I needed to do it for me. I was in love with her, so deeply in love that I didn't care if she was sick. I didn't care that we wouldn't have long together. None of those things mattered to me. All I cared about was doing something that my heart had told me was the right thing to do. In my mind, it was the first time God had ever spoken directly to me, and I knew with certainty that I wasn't going to disobey. I love that. Says, Jamie was more than just the woman I loved and that year Jamie helped me become the man I am today. With her steady hand she showed me how important it was to help others. With her patience and kindness she showed me what life is really about. Her cheerfulness and optimism even in times of sickness was the most amazing thing I ever witnessed. <laughs> so it's the next day um i think i'm film i'm gonna put this after the clip where i filmed about me reading my last book this week so i just want to come in and do like a little wrap up of my week at least the last two books because i never talked to you about it so the first book was appeal i did finish this i didn't finish it before like i was talking about i wanted to finish it before that did because it today is Friday by the way is February 2nd um but um yeah I did not finish it in time for me to go um before I went to the library and picked up books that I had on hold um before going to get my son from school I didn't finish it until that night actually but I did finish it um I'm getting ready to actually go to the library I think now before I go get my son because I do have to return this because it's due and there's hopefully all the books that I put on hold will have come in I put on some cozy mysteries on hold so I'm hoping that they came in um but yeah and the when I went that one day to get the books that I had on hold there was only two they had already put back the other two books that I wanted and one of them was the stored life of AJ Fickery which I've heard is really amazing 
So I had to end up putting it back on hold and now I'm like in fourth in line to get that book again. But it's okay. I'll get it again eventually. So hopefully the Cozy Mysteries, I put three of them on hold. They just sounded so cute. One's like a bookish one. One's like a ramen, <laughs> kind of like Asian type of one. And then another one is like a ice cream shop type of cozy mystery so i'm very excited to get those um but anyways um here we have the p.o by janice hallett i guess that's how you say her name um this is apparently a uk author i believe um because it says international bestseller this book was so good it reminded me so much of clue you're pretty much following um what was their names charlotte and femi so you're following Charlotte and Femi. They're going through these letters and transcripts, emails, um, messages, and um, trying to figure out who killed someone. There's 15 suspects. Um, someone died. They're trying to figure out who killed them. So you're pretty much, it's like you're going through all the transcripts alongside of them and you're trying to figure out, well, when you first start, nobody's been murdered. <laughs> but you're going through and figuring out trying to figure out who's telling a lie somebody's lying there's people that are pretending to be other people and there's somebody within all of these transcripts who doesn't even exist at all so that was it was just so so interesting and i love that it was told through like letters and uh, messages and emails i love that i love that with any book <laughs> So, it's pretty much like this. It's told like this and like messages and emails and stuff like that. Which, I love a book like that. I think it it's very fast paced. It was 410 pages, I believe. And I read it in two days. I read half of it one day and the other half the other day. So, it was really, really good. I usually don't like those clue type of books. But this one, when it's like this, I really, really loved it. So, I did give this five stars on my Goodreads. And I would recommend it. I'm going to have to look into this author to see if they do other books like this. Um, I know I read the um, the Christmas Appeal, which comes after this. It's like one and a half. I don't know if she's doing, if they're going to do any more of the Appeal novels, like since there's a one and a half, but I don't know. But I definitely would check out more books by this author because I really loved the format. Which leads me into the fact that I got to pick a book off my shelf. I did. This is the first week that I've actually picked a book off my shelf. Hold on, let me check my water. back. <laughs> so, I had to stop and dump my noodles. I'm doing some of those bulldog noodles um, that everybody talks about. I actually really like them. They're spicy, but they're so good. <sighs> so, this was the first week I actually got to pick a book off my own shelf. Off of my own TBR because literally my whole collection is a TBR <laughs> because I haven't read none of them. So the first one I ended up picking up was a Nicholas Sparks A Walk to Remember, which y'all, like I said, you already seen some clips where I was reading this and freaking bawling my eyes out. This was so good. And I read that I picked this one up because I watched the movie the other day. I rewatched it because I love this movie. I've seen it. I don't know how many times I've seen this movie, but I've never read the book. So I was like, okay, I need to read the book. And this book looks very used, doesn't it? <laughs> That's the only way I could find it was used through um, thrift, thrift books, I think, was where I got it through. Because I wanted the movie tie-in cover, because I just love the movie tie-in cover when it's a book that's turned into a movie so or a TV show. So, this one is so different. So, in the movie, Landon, I mean, he's still rich, but his father is a doctor. In the book, his father's a politician. And um, they describe Jamie's uh, father. He's a pastor in this one still. Um, but he seems like much older in this one than he was in the movie. They say he's in his 70s in this book or in the movies. In the movie, he's clearly not. He's like maybe in his late 40s um, from the way he looks. 
And then this one is take place. This one takes place in, I believe, 1958, whereas the movie is clearly set in the 90s. And I think I remember reading about it because they thought it would be more relatable if it was in the 90s. So, um, she still has spoiler alert if you haven't read or watched the movie. She still has cancer in this book. That part does not change. Um, but yeah. It, I feel like it was like two completely different experiences between the book and the movie. And you absolutely need to experience both of them. This just... I loved it. I wish Nicholas Sparks wrote more books like this one. I love all his books, by the way. Every book I've read from Nicholas Sparks, absolutely loved. I feel like if you need one of those books, <laughs> if you need a book that makes you cry, Nicholas Sparks is like the easiest one to get that's going to make you cry. I gave this five stars, obviously. I bawled my eyes out, as you've seen from those scenes. It was so heartbreaking, but I loved it. You've seen, um, you just, the way you've seen Landon transform throughout the pages, and he didn't even realize he was transforming and changing, and that every time that he was with Jamie, it was making him just a little bit better. Um, she really changed him into somebody else and it really wasn't her. It was her faith and, um, uh, her faith in God and everything that just, you could see it was like she was a shining light for God and everybody could see that. Um, and in the, in the movie also, they have it to where he's like talking about being a doctor and going to medical school for, uh, to be a doctor and everything. It doesn't talk about any of that in the book. It doesn't really talk about um, what he's going to school for. She does say to him that he is going to be a preacher. That's what she tells him. And you don't really know because the way it ends, it doesn't really say. And it's told like he's... Um, it's like uh, Landon is telling you the story while you're reading the whole book. He's, uh, it says 40 years later, I think it says. It's now 40 years later. I can still remember everything from that day. I may be older and wiser. I may have lived another life since then. But I know that when my time eventually comes, the memories of that day will be the final images that float through my mind. I still love her, you see, and I never removed my ring. In all these years, I've never felt the desire to do so. I breathe deeply, taking in the fresh spring air. Through Buford, though Buford has changed, and I have changed, the air itself has not. It's still the air of my childhood, the air of my 17th year. And when I finally exhale, I'm 57 once more. But this is okay. I smile slightly, looking toward the sky, knowing there's one thing I still haven't told you. I now believe, by the way that miracles can happen. So she changed him. And it doesn't say if he becomes a preacher like she predicted in the beginning of the book. But I have to believe that maybe, maybe, um, maybe he did. Because she was pretty much like <laughs> predicting. Like he even says to her later on, you knew that I was gonna be the lead in the play. You knew that all the things that he was doing, she already knew was going to happen because she prayed for him and she prayed for it to happen and she had faith that it would happen. Oh, hold on. Okay. Now what was I saying? I made my bulldog noodles. Here's what they look like for my lunch. Have y'all seen people that eat these? <laughs> They're so good. You can find them at um, Walmart now. My husband got them for me. But her faith in this book and he never understood that either about his her faith and the fact that it never wavered even though she had cancer god wasn't healing her um but she says she talks about how she has to believe that everybody has a purpose so i think that she, in the end she believed that her purpose was um just to be a like a shining light for the Lord and to share her faith with anybody, even if they won't listen. <laughs> she was always talking about the Lord and I just, I loved it. This was so, so good. So many tears were shed here. 
this just makes me want to read uh i think that's what i'm gonna probably choose for next week's book is maybe redeemed love by francine rivers i have that on my shelf too so this just makes me want to maybe one every week is going to be like a christian romance book <laughs> or a christian fiction book or something but i absolutely adored this it brought so many tears i read literally in one day i started it <laughs> i didn't tell you that part i started it in the morning when i was taking my son to school to drop him off um, we always get there a little bit early, and I read a little bit in my book. He usually plays with the toy that he brings along. Sometimes he'll bring a book along, too, and he'll read also. But, um, and I think he did this time when I was reading this, when he brought his, his, like, dinosaur book with him to read. So, um, yeah. I started that morning reading it. I've, uh read it more when I was going to pick him up and then when I got home uh I read some when I got home from picking him up and then I read some more after <laughs> and then I finished reading it after dinner I had fixed dinner and everything but it's only I think 200 240 pages so it's a very short easy read but still it really touched my heart and it was it was talking about the passage that they had read at her wedding which i told you in the clip the passage about love is always patient love is always kind from corinthians i had i because of this movie and it this movie touched me so much um i had that that uh passage from corinthians also right at my wedding before i got married just i love this book and the movie so much this will probably be my favorite all-time favorite book forever probably we'll see we'll see i haven't read some of the other christian books i have on my shelf that people have really been touched by like uh redeemed love um redeeming love and my hope next door i know a lot of people were touched by that too which i also have that on my shelf to read so um i guess maybe look forward to next week to maybe some more tears but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is it from me this week. Um, it's Friday, so tomorrow morning, Saturday, maybe. Now that I thought about it, probably not. You might not see this until Sunday or Monday. God, um, tomorrow is actually February 3rd, and it's my husband's birthday. And I think he took off from work for his birthday. So if he did that i definitely will not be editing my video to post i might do it on sunday or on monday and just spend the weekend with my husband celebrating his birthday as soon as my son gets home after i pick up my son from school me and him are gonna make his birthday cake which he requested that i make my banana bread which is a starbucks copycat banana bread so i'm making that for him and i don't normally do i'm, I'm gonna usually i put in a loaf pan like regular banana bread but i got some a square pan that i'm gonna put it in and i'm gonna he loves cream cheese so much <laughs> that i'm gonna um make a cream cheese icing to put on top of it so i uh, hopefully it'll turn out good that was my idea um, that's what he wanted for his birthday was for me to make him my banana bread because he loves it so much. And I haven't made it in so long because he's a diabetic, so he really can't have sugar. So I am trying to make it this time instead of using real sugar. I'm going to use Splenda in place of it. Same thing with the icing, the cream cheese icing. Hopefully it'll be as good. I don't know if it'll turn out as good, but we'll see because you're supposed to use powdered sugar to make icing and I'm, instead of powdered sugar I'm using Splenda but hopefully it'll turn out good y'all have to pray for me <laughs> but I'm hoping that it turns out good I've already been praying that it'll turn out good even though I'm using a, a sugar-free sugar but anyways that's it for this video I'm gonna go so I can eat my lunch and then I'm gonna be going to the library to hopefully pick up my cozy mysteries I've been debating on whether I should just wait until Monday. Maybe I'll wait until Monday to pick them up because the two of them are still in transit. 
they haven't made it to the library. They were in transit yesterday, too, so I'm surprised they haven't made it to the library yet. I thought they would. If I get a notification that they've made it to the library before I leave, before it's time to pick up my son from school, then I'll definitely go today. But if not, I'll probably just wait and go Monday and <laughs> pick them up because <sighs> I wanted to include those into my February TBR, so... If not Monday, I will pick them up and I'll include it into my February TBR. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've read any of these books, y'all have to let me know down in the comments down below what you thought of them and if you like them. And I hope you guys are just having a great day, a blessed day. Um, and um, I hope that the Lord continues to bless you. And just know that he loves you, and so do I.